Welcome friends. Welcome back to the channel and the Hobby Barn Basement. Uh, this is Dave bringing you the AD6 Skymaster aka Sky Raider from CY Models. Uh, I have recently acquired this kit from Warbird Models uh, from Chris and Cindy, uh, which I'm going to throw this out. These are spectacular people. Uh, this model is a first run so this is not a review so much as it's going to be a build overview a parts overview and then I'm going to do a series as I go through uh, there were no instructions with this since it was a first run uh, I don't necessarily intend on writing a manual because I'm sure somebody far smarter than I am is going to be doing that uh, however uh, this would make a nice supplement I hope to help somebody who may have some issues down the road uh, also, since <laughs> I'm sure some of my subscribers uh, who watch this are waiting for an update on the Skymaster F-14, the real Skymaster, uh, those gear parts that I have been anxiously waiting for are being manufactured as we speak. So hang on out there, friends. That plane will be hopefully airborne before the end of the summer. So stay tuned for that. So moving on. The Skymaster, a.k.a. Sky Raider, which I will refer to it now as such, uh, is all composite. Bear with me while I grab my notes because I want to make sure I catch everything. This is roughly a six-scale model. Uh, it, it has a 96-inch wingspan. It is 79 inches long. I mocked it up so everybody could see it. And as you can see, that's my six-foot table. And that's the fuselage. So I think I'm going to start there and just give you a quick walkthrough of the fuselage. It has a beautiful cowl, um, plenty of space in the engine bay for a 60 on up uh, engine size. Now I weighed the fuselage because I was curious as to how much an all composite for this would weigh. And it was about four and a half pounds, which was astounding. Uh, this will not be a super heavy model all considering but I do intend to weigh parts as I go uh, it came with a really nice cockpit and canopy uh, one of the things that did happen unfortunately and you know shipping happens it did happen to have a broken latch when it came so getting the, the hatch open was a little tricky but it really uh, it's nice it's got a semi-scale cockpit which I'm going to show everybody here shortly plenty of room for if you're going to do electric for an electric setup or for your gas this did come with a fuel tank and a bung and all the accessories for that. Room for your servos. Tons and tons of space in that fuse, folks. This thing is massive. So I am really excited to have all that extra space to work in. Um, really nice detailing. The paintwork on this for a first run is spectacular. Um, you know, it has your typical blemishes. It is composite, so there are going to be some mold issues, especially on a first run. I have found little things here and there. Nothing that is that off-putting that I'm <laughs> that upset. Stuff happens. Uh, one of the other things as I move on that I wanted to show everybody, that there were tons and tons of details that came with this plane. All of the missile rails came with it. It has really nice covers. Um, get rid of my notebook. We don't need that. Uh, you can see the wings in the panels and the rivets. I mean, there are some minor things. Uh, but again, scale composite for the money. This was a great purchase. It has really nice uh, gear doors with carbon fiber in them. Um, that'll be a really nice. It has a big bay for your gear. The uh, appear to be a JP style um, gear controller for this, and it has beautiful, beautiful, huge uh, scale gear for this model. So I'm super impressed with those. I'm excited to to get those into this. Um, one of the tail sections, and as you can see, bombs, a whole missile pack more rails, um, tons of accessories. It has a light kit with it. Uh, there was no controller 
uh, just the lights, so that'll have to be addressed. Uh, but all of the things you could need for your control surfaces, rudder and your steering, light covers, ailerons, mounting brackets, and it appears that they did something a little creative for your missile mountings. Uh, I have not pulled these out to check them yet, but I'm certain based on the count number that these are supposed to be used to hang your missiles, which would be pretty clever if that's the case. Uh, all of these have either been 3D printed or they're uh, a plastic composite style. All the missiles are light, but they're they're uh, a really nice material. They're not cheap. They're definitely not a foam. Um, but yeah, it came with a, a really nice array of accessories. Uh, the one thing I do want to mention is I'm not super impressed with the hinges, but not a big deal. I ordered a set of Robart hinges to replace those. Uh, the rest of these are your typical um, composite style uh, hinges and control horns. That stuff I will use. Uh, but for the other hinging, uh, Robarts are definitely going to take the place of the ones that came from the factory. Uh, the rods that came with it are 256, all except what appears to be the throttle control, which I plan on doing another large scale electric, which I prefer. So that won't matter for me anyway. Um, more than likely, if the question comes up, it'll be a 12S, probably on a 160 kilovolt uh, Scorpion motor setup. So uh, one of the other things I'm going to move on to now, uh, this is definitely not a beginner's model, but if you're doing large-scale composite, I'm sure it won't be anything, any surprises to anybody uh, when they get into this. Um, everything inside is well done. The missile rails, I wanted to point this out, are either 3D printed, which I'm fairly certain they were, um, but they used a really nice PVA or a heavy PVA because these are stout. All the holes were drilled, uh, which was nice. Now, there were 12 of these for all of your mounts. I happened to have, and they were all keyed or uh, made to the slope of your wings which was really nice. So when you laid them out, you knew which ones went on which wing. Now, my particular kit, when it came, I had three of them, <coughs> excuse me, that went the wrong direction. So I had too many for the left wing and not enough for the right wing. Um, that is definitely not a big deal to me. Uh, it's not something I'm going to go cry back to the supplier for. That's not Warbird models problem. I mean, it is. I'm sure if I called and raised hell that they would happily go over backwards to get me what I needed. But instead, a simple piece of 30-second plywood cut in a strip, some old-school epoxy and micro balloons, and, and a little bit of patience. And 40 minutes later, I had the problem corrected and a little bit of paint, and then it'll be done. So those were the only two things, that and the the latch mechanism that I have found so far that were uh, an issue with this model. I am super pleased. I hope everybody uh, is excited about this is uh, this build as I am. Uh, this is a, a little shot of the detailing in the cockpit. So there's plenty of room in here to put a nice scale pilot, to put your gauges in, uh, do some type of 3D printing for that. Um, uh, not sure where I will go with that exactly, but I do have a, ironically, a Warbird pilot all ready to go. Thank you to Warbird model or to uh, Legend Hobby for that. And to Warbird pilots, Adam Martin, you are the best as always. And I think, folks, for this video, I'm going to wrap that up. Uh, please, as always, like and subscribe. Comments in the comments section. Let me know what you think about this big, beautiful bird. And I'm looking forward to diving in and bringing you the next section. Uh, most likely that's going to be wings. So take care. And this is Dave from the Hobby Barn Basement. Checking out.